What's going on everybody? Welcome to Gmaya's World. And today we're going to be talking about the evolution of Madden and how animations has either helped or hurt the game. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to take you guys back a little bit because some of you guys, the inspiration behind the video was I get a lot of new viewers that are asking, you know, why are you so critical about the gameplay? What's going on? They don't understand uh, about the new features of the aggressive catch, the rat catch, and the possession catch and how over the um, these last four to five years, EA has slowly taken away the user control from individual players. Uh, I'm going to be discussing a lot of different things in this video, uh, specifically to the Maddens that I'm going to be speaking about right now. I'm starting at 16 because with 15, the one thing, even though, like I said, the biggest thing about 15 was the complaints about user catching or face catching. For those of you that didn't play, they were realistic in the way that height mattered. And if your player was bigger, they would more than likely, if the ball was thrown high, they would come down with it. That was pretty much the gist of it, and you had to have a little bit more user to maneuver your players around to get in front, get position, or if you're on defense, come in front, strafe, and get position. Then Madden 16 was born with OBJ. All right, so now, pretty much what happened with that was this. Madden 16 at launch was a very, very good game. I don't think many people can complain about what Madden 16 was at their launch because pretty much the cards played, especially in Mutt, they all played to what the actual attributes said. If you guys don't believe me, get Madden 16, just brand new. Don't download anything and just play it. Try to, you know, just down, don't stay offline, just play it, and you'll see what I'm talking about. The speed thresholds with wide receivers and cornerbacks were fine. If your receiver was way faster than the defender, there was nothing that that defender could do when he was above him about 5 to 10 yards. All right? Not like Madden 19 where, uh, well, I'm going to go through it. I don't want to just start raging on Madden 19 yet and how the gameplay of this game has proven to get worse. Like, I, at one point, I didn't think that anything gameplay-wise could be worse than 18. And I'm convinced at this point that um, they've actually done that. They've actually made... Madden 19 through patches be gameplay wise one of the worst games ever made. So look, let, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and explain why I feel that way about it, and then you guys can leave your comments, and then we can hash it up and figure out what's going on. All right. So listen, let's get back to 16. Pretty much what happened was this, right? Brashard Perriman, who was like a very very, I think it was like a silver. He was a silver with like 97 speed at launch because at the combine he was very very fast or whatever. Like you know how they do their stats. Guy was very, very fast, like 6'2", burning everybody. So what happened was EA Sports started to get a lot of complaints about how fast Perriman was. They got to patch this. They got to patch that. They didn't look at the fact that based on the way the game was made, everything was right. He was supposed to be burning those guys that he was running past because of how fast he was compared to what the speed of the defender was. So EA Sports, as they always do, they become proactive uh, well, no, reactive and not proactive. Because what happens is this. They reacted to the complaints without actually looking at the fact that the game was fine based on the speed that he had. You see what I'm saying? Like, so, for instance, people wanted to come out and run man-to-man -man on, uh, on Brashard Perriman when he was that fast and still be able to stick with him like you're able to do right now in Madden 19, which is not realistic. For any, any of us that have played football on any level, we all know that, you know, speed is everything. And once you get a step... Usually, the only thing that can happen is they drop the ball. The defender is not going to be around them the way that they are right now. So after that being one of the biggest things that was going on in Madden 16, also the A gaps and stuff like that, which later became more of a problem because EA decided to patch it and they made it worse. And then it created double, triple A gaps, B gaps, C gaps, all kinds of gaps. It was crazy, right? Uh, another thing was getting the ball out with aggressive catches. At the launch of Madden 19, I mean Madden 16, uh, you were able to hold the square button or the X button when you were in the vicinity of the area and the ball would pop out. And a lot of people didn't know that. That was like a secret thing that people knew. Everybody thought you would just get mossed and that was it. But that's not the way it was. You could actually hold the square or the X button and the guy would, it would actually like, you know, get the ball out. The guy wouldn't be able to come down with the ball. Okay. After the patch, aggressive catching became completely OP. And what happened with it was no matter who the player was, Everybody was able to aggressive catch. Most of you guys were aggressive catching me with punters. Um, it, it was crazy. It was really, really bad. And it got really out of control. And then at that point, after that patch, also the A gaps, the B gaps, the C gaps, all kinds of gaps, it got wild. Dudes were screaming with like three-man rushes. Uh, there was the um, the dime 236 uh, that Stiffmeister beat problem with, just coming in every snap. You couldn't block it. 
Well, you could block it, but you had to do a lot of different things. You had to slide one way. You had to bring out your moms, the coach, everybody. And it was different ways to block it. But in that championship game, Problem was not aware how to block it. And Stiff was just screaming at him. That wouldn't have happened if they weren't so uh, reactive and patched the game and messed up the way that the O-line actually blocked. Because truth be told, even though there were A-gaps in the game at launch, it was very, very simplistic on how to block it. And once you were able to block it, you had all day in the pocket. But again, because of those patches, that's what happened. So look, not only that, remember what I told you in the beginning. With Rashad Perriman, because he was able to burn somebody, that's when they created the into my body and the slide into my DMs. All right? So what is that? What's the slide into my DMs? What that is is an animation that when the player is beat deep, you're able to actively slide into the player and prevent him from catching the ball. Very, very unrealistic. Uh, 2K also has a lot of that stuff going on. Both both of these uh, publishers, EA Sports and both 2K, they both are doing the same things, I guess. It's just something that's making everybody really happy to have people slide into each other. But prior to 16's patch, that never happened. And that's why a lot of people were able to take advantage of bad defenses. If you pressed and your player was able to beat the press, you were able to beat them over the top, all that stuff like that. Madden 16 changed that with the patch. You were able to see now that the guy, no matter how far behind he was, he was able to slide into you from like five to ten yards back. Very, 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 very poor gameplay. One of the most disturbing things that I've ever seen in gameplay ever. And that was designed to stop players from reacting the way that they should have by, you know, being able to burn people deep. That alone made me, at that point, disgusted with everything that had to do with Madden. And for somebody that loves Madden and has played Madden for so long, I was very disappointed in the fact that these developers decided to do something like that because they ultimately created what we're still dealing with today from that one patch. All right. So now, the slide into the DMs. That's Madden 16. The animation domination started then. Now what happened? They went into 17 and the swerve was the biggest problem. The swerve was something to where, you know, you go in and out and the defender followed you and then you cut him off and then you were gone for six. I got a ton of videos just doing it. I didn't care anymore. Like at some, I think like two months in, I just didn't care anymore. And I just started swerving everybody and it was wild. Um, a, a huge glitch in the game. But let me tell you something though. In Madden 11 and 12, you were still able to do that. The only difference was the defense, you were able to control the defense. Let me try to explain this to you in, a, in the, the, the simplest way possible. The swerve was in Madden 11, 12, and 13, but the defense didn't react the same way. They were actually able to control themselves and the CPU wouldn't control it, and they were able to actually, you know, step in front, pick the ball, all that stuff like that. I was actively swerving for a very, very long time, um, you know, in those other games, and there's numerous gameplay showing it, uh, you know, how that worked out. But because the defense, EA Sports, took away your user in 17, people were easily able to manipulate the AI and make them spin around and do stuff, and you, they would, you just go for six. That was the year where you could just come out and be at your own 20 and throw an 80-yard touchdown because you were going to swerve somebody. That's what 17 was all about primarily, and that was the biggest thing on their list. We got to fix that. When all they really needed to do was adjust the way that the defense played so that all those things weren't happening. And, you know, in all reality, that's the way that they should have handled it. But they went into 18 and they created the high point um, rat catch glitch. All right. So with the high point rat, cat, rat, cat, rat catch glitch, all you needed was a Harold Carmichael. You know what I'm saying? Or somebody really tall and it was going to be a wrapperoni with cheese. And what that meant was you would high point it on a rat catch and the defender wouldn't be able to react to it. Not only that. They had a lot of things that were going on with nano detection, you know, but that was in 17 as well. But 18 was more enhanced with it. The bad timing drop user pick. A lot of other things that they added into the game. Unnecessary animations. Um, the possession catch in 18 was OP, which they then tuned down in 19. And now when you're going for a possession catch, you can have the ball for like 30 minutes and they can still hit it out of you. Uh, but again, 18 was primarily, you know... Look, high point rat glitch, uh, high point rat glitch, rat catch glitch. It's just so many things I'm saying. It's like Peter Piper pick peppers. But high point pass rat glitch was one of the major things. And um, defensively, the zone, the zone coverages with having like a a, um, a threshold and people trying to meet that threshold 
and the game being manipulated through various patches, and then all of a sudden nobody was playing zone coverage. So we fast forward now to Madden 19, and we start to look at a lot of these things. One of the biggest things that I've noticed about Madden 19 is at launch, it was a pretty decent game. Oh, also in 17, there was a glitch where you was able to see if your, your uh, player was running or passing. Or maybe that was the beginning of 18. It was one of those. Like, EA just does weird things. It, it is what it is, whatever. They had that going on also. They had to patch it. And then through patching that, they created a lot of other things as well. But with 19 right now, right, this is one of the biggest things about, uh, about 19 that I don't understand. They have animations that are just completely unnecessary. For instance, if you're in position to swat a ball and a guy throws it deep and they get a rat catch animation, your guy just jumps on his back and just starts riding him like a cowboy. And the guy gets the rat catch animation and catches it regardless. So you lose complete control of your player. Remember, this is all leading back to Madden 16's patch because this is all about like sliding into the player. All unrealistic animations that have been added into Madden. And again, a lot of you guys that play 2K, I got a lot of friends that play it like professionally. And they, they're just disgusted with it as well because it's it's just it takes away a lot of the user once an animation is, you know, once it's activated, it's over. And it's not like they didn't have other animations prior to 16 because the animations were developed by us. Like we would juke, we would move. It was more user control. We were able to do a lot of different things. Uh, you, you really had to have stick. It was a lot of, um, you know, it was more inclined that you would have to have user. And this, this is the issue. The new generation of Madden, what happens is now people think that, okay, this is supposed to happen. My player... If he's Randy Moss and he goes up for a one-handed catch and there's like a four-foot-three uh, Ty Tyran Matthew behind him, he's not supposed to pick that ball. But EA Sports has an animation where it's always an interception. You see what I'm saying? Like, all of the things that they do within the gameplay, the bad time and drop user pick, if you lurk a ball and, you know, you're right in front of it, if they want to make it because the catching aspect is not in the threshold and that's why you drop it, that's one thing. But the, the, the bad timing user, user pick is a broken mechanic that in some cases you just drop the ball just because. It's not about the timing. Because in, in most cases, I time it perfectly and they still drop it. And that's been an ongoing issue. So what happens is EA Sports, they, they start to attack certain things that are not as meaningful as the other things that are going on. Like your old lineman blocking the person in front of them. That's been going on for a while. Um, IDing a player... And that player comes even faster. Uh, having a three-man or a two-man rush out of nickel big over G or big nickel over G, whatever kind of over G it is, and he's they're, they're screaming. Two or three people. It's like your quarterback has a T-bone stake in the middle of his butt cheeks. They're screaming at the snap. And you can't do nothing about it because if you move either way, most of the time they're on aggressive, but you can't fake hype them because of coaching adjustments, which in my opinion also – either needs to be fixed or removed from the game because there's so many different ways to manipulate it, uh, either running or defensively coming in with the pass rush, like with the example that I just gave you. But for the majority of it, the gameplay itself, it's the animations themselves that you have to bank on. And that's why a lot of veteran players stepped away from the game. Because if you talk to them about it, yeah, you know, if they're doing a... Um, you know, commentating about it, they got to be professional. But if you talk to them directly about the game, that's one of the major things. It's all about animations. What animation am I going to get? Is the defense just going to jump up in slow motion and pick the ball and my guy is going to try to fight him? Or, or, you know, or am I going to be able to jump that play? It's a lot of things that go on like that within the game that has changed Madden over the years. Now, whether you like Madden, you don't like Madden, most of you guys don't want to get it again. It doesn't really matter. You're going to have the Joneses for it, and you're going to end up getting it anyway, and you're going to regret it. But look, again, like I don't want to say regret at this point because I want to see what they do with the game. I just don't know if they have enough time with the one-year ratio or even if they want to do it. You know, because like in most cases, I think they don't even want to change it. I think basically the ability that they have to make anybody come in and just start playing it. Like my two-year-old nephew, he's mossing me. You know what I'm saying? Like, for, for, the, for the realism of it that they can still make all of this money and the pro players are going to just have their whole gist of running bunch or trips and, you know, whatever defense, 3-3-5, three, three, stopping the run and all that stuff. And that's, that's, that's the actual threshold. That's the difference. These pro players now, they just find all gimmicks that work and that's it. Prior to 16, you had to really have a scheme. You had to really know what you was doing because 
it was more user control based. And that's not to knock the players right now, but e people act like there weren't ebooks prior to these years of Madden. Everybody had ebooks. You just you were able to outskill somebody that just didn't really have the skill. That's no longer the case. Because everybody can throw it up in the quintuple of coverage and get an animation or rat catch you and you're right there for a pick, but you can't do anything. And those are some of the real difficult things that has happened. Now, with all the new things about Superstar X Factor and all kinds of factors with the X, I'm going to tell you this right now. I believe that Madden 19 was a test. This is a test. Like, it was a test to see what could work and what couldn't work because they probably didn't have the time to make sure that it thoroughly worked. And they used us as experiments to see what actually worked and what didn't. So there's a chance that the abilities might be a lot better, okay, in Madden uh, 20. There is a chance of it because they've already really just destroyed everything in this game. So there is a high chance that that might happen. So before we go ahead and jump the gun on 20, we have to wait to see what it's about. But I will tell you this. As long as they keep the game animation based, nothing else will really matter. The game is going to play like it's going to play and that's it. There's nothing else that's going to happen. Nothing will be different. It will be the same exact thing again for another year. But what I predict is that at launch, more than likely, it's going to be a really decent game. And then after that, when we get our first patch, it's over. I would love to know what you guys think and what was your major cases between 16, 17, 18, and 19. Leave it in the comments and let's talk about it. I'm going to see you guys and girls next time. One love.